You can draw a line and the footsteps appear. It's like an invisible person is walking around in your house with dirty feet. You're just going to let them track dirt all over your floor? Alright, here we are in Blender. I'm using version 3.3 for this one. And first thing we want to do is make a floor for our footsteps to appear on. So hit Shift A, add in a plane, and you can just scale that up. And for our footsteps, I'm going to use images as planes, which is an add-on. If you go to edit preferences, add-ons, and search for images as planes, you just make sure this is checked and this should work fine for you. So you can hit shift A, go down to image, choose images as planes, and then navigate to your footstep picture. So I have a few that I made. They're just transparent PNGs. Uh, I'll put a link to them in the description. I'm going to select the right shoe and then press import. And if we turn on render view, it should be transparent like this. It doesn't really matter where you put this. I'm actually just going to hide it. And then we're going to create a curve, shift A, bring in a curve, Bezier curve like that. Now hit T and tab into edit mode and we can just select everything right here and delete it and go down to draw right here. And this is how we can draw our path. And you can just make sure that you have surface selected up here. If you don't see these options, you can hit N to open up the side panel and under tool, you can change this from cursor to surface like that. And this should let you, you know, draw like so. Now that we have our curve, we can go into geometry nodes and with our curve selected, add a new node tree like this. Now we do want to keep the original group input, um, but we want to resample it. So resampling is going to change the resolution. It's basically going to change the amount of points that it has all along it. And we're going to set this to length. And on these points, we want to instance our picture. So we can actually just drag this from the outliner over like this. We want to get an instance on points node. And you can hook the geometry up to the instance slot like that. Now you can see we have like a whole bunch of planes right here. And in render view, it's basically just a smear because there are so many of them. So we can turn the length distance up and you can see now they're starting to spread apart. We're also getting a little bit of Z fighting right here because they're on the same plane basically. So we can raise that up with a translate instances node like this. And we can just raise it up like 0 0.02 or something like that. Now I want to make sure that these are rotating so that they follow the direction of the curve. So to do that, we can bring in a tangent node right here, and we want to bring in an align Euler to vector node. Make sure the tangent is plugged into the vector, and we can plug the rotation into the rotation slot of the instance on points node. Now I think we just have to set this to Y, and they should be following the curve like that. I also like to change the pivot to Z because that keeps them from rotating weird. Occasionally I'll draw a curve and they'll rotate kind of strange and that seems to fix it. Now we can change this again to make them space apart a little bit. So we want there to be two feet. So the way that I like to do this is basically select every even foot and move it one way and all of the odds we move the other way. So the way we separate the evens and the odds is with a separate geometry node. And we want to make sure this is set to instances because right now we're working with instances, as you can see. And we can bring in an index node. So the index is just going to count the instances. So, you know, this one will be zero, one, two, three, four, five. That's what this is going to output. And we can get a math node and we want to set this to modulo and plug the index in. And then you can plug this into the selection. If we set the modulo to two, this is going to delete everything that's divisible by two. And if you set it to three, it will delete every third one, every fourth if you set it to four. It looks for the index that's divisible by four and it's going to you know, separate it and delete it basically. So we want this set to two. And you can see that the separate geometry node, instead of just deleting it, it's going to have our selection, which is this, and it's going to have the opposite all of the other ones right there. So we can join these together and just treat them a little differently. Let's bring a join geometry node like this and plug in both of them. We can take another translate instances node right here and we can, you know, push all of these to one side and all of the other ones to the other side. And I want to be able to control both of those at the same time. So the way we'll do that is with a value node. We want the value to only change the X right here. So we need a combine X, Y, Z one for here too. And we can plug this into the X of both like that. But we want one of these to be negative so we can bring in a math node. I'll make the top one negative, change this to subtract and make sure that this is being subtracted from zero like that. Now I'll just clean this up. And now this value 
should push the evens and odds in separate directions like that. These are all right feet. So to make it so that one side is flipped, all we have to do is bring in a scale instances and we can just scale it by negative one on the X. So negative one, and now that side is flipped. So if you want, you can call this done. You go into edit mode and just like we did in the beginning, just use the draw tool to draw whatever shapes you want like this. But I want a few more options. So I would like to be able to rotate these a little more. So we'll do the same thing that we did right here with the translate instances, except we'll use a rotate instances node. One for both sides. And we can just copy the value node, the subtract and the combine X, Y, Z and shift D to duplicate, bring that over here. And we can plug this into the rotation like that. The only problem is that we want these to rotate on the Z like that. So we just have to change this to Z, just unplug it, plug it into the Z like that. And now this value will control the rotation and they rotate in opposite directions like that. Now we can add a walking animation by deleting some of these instances. So right after we turn them into instances right here, we can add a delete node, delete geometry, and we'll take another index node right here. And we want to get a compare node. So you can just drag it out and search for compare like this. And now we can plug this into the selection. Oh, the delete is set to point. So we need to change this to delete instances. Now, when we move this, you can see that some of them are being deleted but right now it's set to equal. So we wanna change this to greater than, I believe, greater than or equal. And now when we turn this up, you can see that it's growing like that. Now, one problem with this is that when it gets to the end, say we only have like 19 steps right here, if we change the resolution so that there are more footsteps, um, this will shrink and we have to turn this up. So this isn't really percentage based. And if we wanted it to be percentage based, then we have to do something a little differently. We can bring in an attribute statistics node right here, and we wanna use the geometry from right there. I didn't want it to unplug though, so we should plug that back in. And for the attribute, we can plug in the index. So this will give us some options now. We can find like the maximum index amount right here, and we can use the maximum to find a percentage. So to make this work, we can get a math node and set this to multiply and plug in the maximum right here. Now I'll set the compare node to less than or equal like that, and we can plug the index into the bottom and this multiply into the top. Oh yeah, and we need to change this from point to instance, just like the delete node over here. Now this should be like a percentage amount. So if we set it to zero, there should be none. And if we turn it up to one, that's a hundred percent. There will be a little problem where if we turn it up a little higher, you can see there's one last footstep. You can clear that up by adding another node right here and setting that to add, just, uh, just add one like that. Now it should work properly where if it's set to zero, there are none. And if it's set to one, there are all of them. And this should work fine for you know, no matter how many footsteps you add. Now you can animate this all the ways you would normally animate anything. So we could just bring a timeline up right here. And on the first frame, we can insert a keyframe with this set to zero like this. And we can, you know, scroll to the end, set this to one and then insert another keyframe like that. And if you want this to grow at the same speed the whole time, instead of, you know, being slow, speeding up and then being slow again, you can just select all of these keyframes and hit T and choose linear like that. And now it should grow at the same speed like this. If you're obsessed with nodes, you can clear this, set it to zero, and we can bring in a scene time node and we'll grab another math node and set this one to ping pong. And this is pretty similar to modulo, except instead of going up to the number that you specify, it's going to go up to it and then go back to. So we can plug in seconds and then plug this into the multiply right here. And if we hit the space bar, you can see it will grow and then go back like that. And if you want this to go slower, you just have to put a divide node before this and then turn this up a little higher like that. If you want the file that I made in this one or from any of my other videos, you can get them on Patreon along with early access videos and coupon codes for free products. I also donate some of the profits to environmental causes each month. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.